Okay, we should all we should always remember what Mori said before uh, almost 60 years ago about the uh, album function. That if we if we lost about 50 percent uh, of the album motion, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, this is reduced the uh, extremity function over 80 percent. Uh, when we're talking about uh, a ectopic of fixation, we're talking uh, uh, as a part of uh, a general term like ectopic ossifications, which include myositis uh, ossificans. And when we, we talk about heterotopic ossification, is the formation of uh, uh, laminar bone in areas non atomic, non osseous tissue. And uh, when we're talking about myositis ossificans, we're talking about uh, abnormal bone formation in areas of uh, diamonds uh, or inflammatory muscles. Uh, let's see some predisposing factors about the uh, elbow uh, teratopic ossification. Of course, the elbow trauma, and uh, it's about 30% in simple dislocation, and this goes almost 20% when the elbow dislocation uh, is associated with uh, fractures. Uh, you should remember that rendered fractures are treated with uh, surgery more than 24 hours after injury. And um, revision of failed uh, um, elbow uh, techniques uh, within uh, two months or uh, the old uh, methods that we use, which was uh, uh, the two incision for distal uh, biceps tendon repon. These are uh, situations that related and predispose to heterotopic classifications. Generally, as you know, as better as I always know that all know that uh, traumatic brain injury is uh, one of the predisposing factors for the heterotopic suffocation, and uh, almost five to ten percent of the of the patients with uh, TBI injury they will be complicated with heterotopic uh, elbow suffocation, uh, and this is goes almost ninety percent when the brain injury associated with. Uh, fracture or elbow dislocation. And uh, while we're talking about brain injury, the um, elbow side is the second side where the uh, teratopic dislocation will uh, uh, um, develop. And uh, when the teratopic dislocation is in the anterior part of the elbow, this is the result in flexor spasticity. And the upper side, when uh, the uh, teratopic dislocation um, developed in the posterior side, this is uh, uh, leads to the extensor spasticity. In this particular uh, um, case, uh, we always, not always, but we have frequently ulnar nerve entrapment. And uh, never forget the spinal cord injury where the uh, elbow heterotopic syndication is the third, uh, the third position. And uh, uh, Always have in mind the burn injuries where the uh, um, elbow heterotopic ossification is the first side. And uh, we can see in patients with 30 degrees burns uh, in any side of the body, in uh, 30 degree burns over the elbow, and especially the, burn, the patients who are there in uh, bed for a long period of time. So the most important for us as a surgeon is the surgical management. Uh, the, in, in the question, do all the patients need or require surgical management? Uh, absolutely not. And uh, the main indication, I think, that is the functional uh, arc of the motion. It's the functional arc that limits the patient's activity or the other activities of daily living, as Maurice said. So, when we consider about uh, surgical management, have in mind uh, the limitation of the elbow motion. If there are other associated fractures or other damages, if the articular uh, surfaces are concrete or there are uh, developed uh, arthritic changes, especially for the patients with DBI injury, uh, the stabilization of the brain injury, and definitely we must select the, uh, uh, the appropriate patients. You must... Uh, Meet not the expectations of the patients, but uh, but always what we can do for this patient, which first must understand the problem, which must understand what is the functional age of motion from him, what is the prognosis after the surgery, and uh, the most important that the surgery must be accompanied or associated after the injury with 
uh, intense physiotherapy. What is the time of the surgical excision? Definitely, uh, we know for more than 20 years now that uh, the old notion about the, the, the levels of the serum alkali and phosphatase uh, are no longer uh, predictive factors for the uh, maturity of the, of the uh, prognosis of the heterotopic certification. Uh, um, in parallel, either the uh, bone scan uh, um, procedure, which is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, it, it could be remain uh, uh, positive for a prolonged time after the maturation of the heterotopic calcification. Uh, it is not exactly controversial, but it's a matter of, of uh, uh, discussion. Uh, today, there is a trend for an earlier uh, excision uh, of the heterotopic calcification space for the elbow, and uh, it's, it should better uh, uh, delay for the surgical excision because there's always a risk. And when we're talking about risk, we time, we're talking about limitation in pronation, supination, a contraction of the soft tissues, and of course, uh, the immobilization uh, has impacts to the articular uh, um, cartilage. Uh, today, most many surgeons uh, pre prefer to, uh, uh, um, to start the, uh, the surgery almost three to four months after the uh, appearance of the heterotopic calcification, the most conservative, they prefer it, they prefer about uh, six months after the, 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 the appearance, but definitely less than 12 months. And um, when we're waiting for a long, that's not ensure the possibility of the recurrence. And so our decision must be balanced between the delays of risk and the recurrence of the heterotopic calcification. Of course, in situations like uh, burns uh, uh, patients and uh, head injuries, we should wait about the uh, recovery of the patient, the neurological recovery of the patient, and for the reconstruction of the soft tissue when uh, we try to uh, remove the heterotopic calcification. Uh, especially for the pediatric population, is uh, is worth waiting because sometimes, and, and not sometimes, but a lot of times. There is spontaneous resolution because the the, uh, the kids they have always this uh, uh, capacity of uh, recreational and this capacity it's, it, that is always surprises us. Uh, so we have always in our mind that the type of the injury when we we we're thinking about the excision, we have the uh, we, we must follow the clinical presentation if there's swelling, warmth, erythema, pain, or uh, motion or uh, loss of motion. And of course, we have to follow the maturation of the uh, heterotopic calcification with consecutive plain radiographs. When we decided to do the operation for this at this elbow, we should always we have a 3D, 3CD, uh, uh, three uh, computer tomography because they will show us the exact local localization of the uh, heterotopic calcification. It always and uh, always guide us where we are going and what we want to remove. Uh, of course, uh, careful pre-operative pre plan and safe surgical approach. In general, we remove not, uh, we don't do a, a, a actinological uh, debridement uh, of the uh, heterotopic bone because this is always has uh, uh, risk about to remove a part of the normal bone and the part of the articular surface. So we have to remove exactly all the amount that uh, um, creates problems to the, uh, the motion of the elbow. Of the elbow. So we will have after the removal of the bone, we have uh, uh, get the uh, uh, arc of the motion that really is functional. We should we should stop, and always we have an traumatic handling because this is important. Uh, because I see a lot of times young centers that are very uh, aggressive sometimes that that makes a very very uh, um, serious uh, damage to the soft tissue. Of course, we have, uh, in in all these cases we have a, a careful hemostasis. Uh, we always put uh, suction drainage, and we prefer because of the bone task we prefer the uh, osteotomous rather than the source. Uh, and. Uh, we have always uh, on my mind, uh, we have always in our mind that we have the avoid the neurological injury, and sometimes we need to release or to translocate the nerves if necessary. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, definitely after the operation, a few days after the operation, we start uh, almost uh, uh, immediately the physiotherapy and the podiatric uh, of the motion. The most frequent sign of the um, development of the ectopic ossification is the posterior lateral aspect. I, I put these pictures not as an example, but as an example to don't do because I think it's a very extreme um, 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 section. And I don't believe that uh, we need so much uh, uh, incision. Um, when the ectopic bone is uh, located in the medial aspect, we do we, we go in uh, on, on the medial side and always some, and always have to uh, protect fine and protect the ulnar nerve, and which sometimes is in a tunnel of bone, and and most of the time it is intact in terms of the functional uh, uh, capacity. So we have to remove the bone, we have to release the nerve, and have to give it back without any damage and any functional deficit. Um, sometimes when the um, um, heterotopic is located in the uh, anterior side, we, we try to approach with an ant anterior lateral incision. And also in this case, we need to protect and find uh, the radial nerve. And uh, you can see here the radial nerve. This is the humerus. This is the radial head. The radial head. This is the ectopic, the heterotopic ossification. And this is we find we found first the radial nerve. We secure that, and then we try to remove the uh, um, ectotopic ossification. Sometimes this is the slides that I, I, I uh, asked from uh, Shabas to give me. Sometimes because we, uh, we it's it's necessary to do that. We we lead with a very uh, um, uh, serious instability, and this time we need to protect the stability of the elbow with uh, devices like the external fixation or uh, some anchors, as we see in the, in the, in the slide. Uh, after the operation, uh, pain controls, dynamic splints, all the uh, regular uh, management, cryocap, continuous motion. Uh, the CPM device, it looks for the elbow that does not work as in, uh, in the, uh, in the, um, um, joint of the knee. I, this is my opinion. I, I don't know if, uh, if it's right or not, but it's, not, it's my opinion. Uh, although uh, more uh, uh, associates uh, uh, suggest a uh, uh, low dose external beam radiation, like uh, 700 cent uh, centigrade, 24 hours, or no later than 10 to 72 hours of the surgery. And also there are a couple of, um, a lot of, maybe a lot of articles that support this notion. Uh, there's still a, a, a thought about uh, the increased risk of uh, non-union. And I recall this paper from 2010 in a study from Southern North Carolina that uh, the study was terminated because a high number of adverse uh, and, uh, effect in these uh, patients, and because uh, there's an increased rate of the uh, um, uh, non-union in the site of the uh, uh, elbow. Uh, there's another study of from uh, the uh, University of Ioana, it's a meta-analysis, uh, where the author said that the use of the radiation for the privation of uh, HO is supported by weak evidence. So. Uh, your conclusions. Uh, they have used uh, also oral non-steroidal uh, uh, agents like endomethacine, which is uh, the most common with the dose that you see that's uh, through the inhibition of prostaglandines. It's also they uh, they use selective uh, COX inhibitor. Uh, Usually for the hip, uh, for the hip, uh, in, in, for the for the prevention of uh, teratopic ossification in total hip arthroplasty, but uh, I don't I don't have see a lot of articles for the use of uh, uh, NSAIDs uh, in uh, elbow except this article. Uh, the only I found recently um, the reason the reason that they don't use that they don't routinely use uh, NSO. SAH for the um, uh, heterotopic deprivation because the potential risk of non-union. Recently, there is an article 
2001, uh, that um, uh, said that uh, the use of the uh, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent has no effect uh, uh, in uh, prevention of the NSID in, in um, heterotopic nephrification, and uh, that only one patient suffered of non-union. That's a, that's a, that's really a, a, a very uh, uh, um, provocative, and uh, it's it should be. Uh, it should be for conversation because this is a different notion about what we know about the use of uh, uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory agents for the heterotopic calcification. Uh, the oral uh, diphosphonates they, they, they have used in the past uh, from the 1976, especially the hydronate, but uh, um, it believes that its role in uh, the inhibition of the mineralization of the organic state. But uh, there are no papers for the specific use of this kind of agents for the uh, elbow heterotopic classification. But most of the uh, but most of the uh, authors they they don't suggest the use of bifosfonate uh, um, for HO prophylaxis because uh, this kind of agent they can impair the serious diffraction here, and because most of the uh, orthopedic injuries. Uh, I mean, because of most, most of the injuries, uh, they have orthopedic uh, injuries, uh, it should be very careful when we use this uh, kind of agents. Um, finally, when uh, I, I would like to uh, call and to uh, invite you to in the ninth seminar, uh, which we held in uh, Ioana uh, in about one month. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, attention.